So recently we got a ton of surprises in regards to Tesla stock and some of which even caught me by surprise as well. And so in this video, I want to go ahead and highlight what the heck is going on with Tesla stock as well as talk about the price action that we're seeing and also just provide some commentary of what we're seeing from a macroeconomic perspective as well. And so I want to start off this video by highlighting this tweet right over here in which we have Elon Musk saying, I am uncomfortable growing Tesla to be a leader in AI and robotics without having a approximate 25% voting control enough to be influential but not so much that I can't be overturned. Unless that is the case, I would prefer to build products outside of Tesla. You don't seem to understand that Tesla is not one startup, but a dozen. Simply look at the delta between what Tesla does and General Motors. As for stock ownership itself being enough motivation, Fidelity and others own similar stakes to me. Why don't they show up for work? Now this original tweet caused a lot of hysteria in regards to Tesla stock because a lot of market participants pour capital into Tesla not only for what they're doing in the EV space but also just speculating on the developments of its new technologies in the AI space and also in the robotic space and so this caused a lot of fear I mean we actually recently had some good updates of Tesla from a robotic space as we had this video of pretty much Optimus now folding clothes which is actually putting us closer and closer to having a reality very similar to what we used to see on that TV show the Jetsons with the robot Rosie kind of doing a lot of the housework I mean we're already at a point where robots are able to bypass that capture section where they select they're not a robot and so of course a lot of individuals are worried or got recently worried about this you know tweet from Elon Musk now he continued this tweet by also saying I should note that the Tesla board is great the reason for no new compensation plan is that we are still waiting for a decision in my Delaware compensation case, the trial for which was held in 2022, but a verdict has not yet to be made. I put compensation plan in quotes because from my standpoint, this is primarily about ensuring the right amount of voting influence at Tesla. If I have a 25% stake, it means that I am influential, but could be overridden if twice as many shareholders vote against me versus for me. At 15% or lower, the for slash against me ratio to override me makes a takeover by dubious interest to too easy. I would be fine with a dual class voting structure to achieve this, but I am told it's pretty much impossible to achieve post IPO in Delaware. And so after Elon Musk made this tweet, a lot of individuals realize it's not really kind of like a financial motivation for Elon, but more just about having that actual ownership or that, you know, influential decision over Tesla. And that definitely, you know, kind of cleared up some of the drama. And we're now seeing a lot of tweets surface on how it's not a bad idea to just give Elon Musk, you know, more ownership into Tesla. In fact, we have this tweet saying, can anyone name a single downside of giving Elon Musk a new incentive package. And honestly, I agree. I don't really think there's any downside. I mean, I honestly believe Elon Musk kind of deserves it, right? I mean, if someone is putting the work in, do they not deserve to actually get rewarded for that? And of course, you know, I'm all for Elon Musk getting a new compensation plan. But, you know, after this tweet, you know, kind of surfaced, so there was a lot of expectations that Tesla was going to continue falling downwards. And what we ended up seeing today was quite interesting. We actually saw Tesla pretty much outperform the market on today when we actually saw Tesla pretty much rise upwards. But before I go ahead and talk about the technical reasons on why we possibly saw this, I also want to highlight that just from a positive catalyst perspective, we got this list over here today highlighting all the total units of EVs sold in 2023 and pretty much Tesla is dominating. I mean, even its closest competitor, Chevrolet Bolt, is not even close. <laughs> <laughs> but with that said, I want us to go ahead and hop into my laptop. This way we can take a look at Tesla stock from a deeper technical perspective, as well as just highlight some of the commentary that we recently got today in regards to what we're seeing in the macroeconomic environment and kind of highlight how that impacted the markets for today as well. But before we hop into my laptop, just a friendly reminder that if you are not subscribed to the channel, consider tapping that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future upload. And while you're at it, consider checking out the links in the description below.
below because one of the links is a link to my free weekly market post insights where every single week I send out an email talking about what's going on in the overall markets and the economy and things that we should be aware of as market participants. And again, guys, it's completely free. So why not check out that link down below? But with that said, let's go ahead and hop into my laptop. Alrighty, so we are officially in my laptop taking a look at Tesla stock, which by the way, if you guys made it to this portion of the video, I highly encourage you guys to watch this video in its entirety. As in my opinion, I believe this portion of the video has much more substance as the beginning portion of this video was much more of kind of like a catch up of what recently happened. And so now I want to go ahead and talk about what ended up happening. So we saw Tesla stock uh, pretty much sell off for quite a bit. I was talking about Tesla stock pretty much falling off for quite a bit. But we saw this big green candle, which actually even took me by surprise as well. And that's why I said this was something that was pretty surprising because although uh, this news or this update with the tweets with Elon was kind of bearish, we saw Tesla stock actually push up high for today. In fact, we see that Tesla stock, if we measure it for today, uh, moved up about 5%, um, you know, at its peak for today. Uh, and then, of course, we did kind of come down. We're going to go ahead and talk about what ended up happening at 11 as well, as there were some uh, updates as, uh, as well at that time period. But definitely something that caught me by surprise. Now, uh, something that some of the people who uh, look at, you know, the technicals kind of highlighted is that this was a perfect bounce from one of the Fibonacci uh, levels for Tesla. Now, I personally don't like to look at Fibonacci levels. In fact, I personally don't like to use too much technical analysis in regards to uh, looking at a particular stock, but it is quite uh, noteworthy that when you highlight, and I know it looks crazy now, right? This is something I, I don't like this, right? But when you look at the Fibonacci levels and you have to kind of put it on a weekly time frame, and you go from the, the low of 1180 all the way to the high of uh, $414.50, uh, and then you kind of zoom in, we see that Tesla pretty much bounced up around this uh, Fibonacci sequence level. And so that was something that's pretty notable. Now, uh, let's go ahead and actually clean it up again. Uh, I, I don't like having uh, Fibonacci's on the chart. They're pretty useful at times, but again, not a big fan. But with that out of the way, one of the things we have to understand that, I, that when, let's go ahead and switch to a daily time frame as well. One of the things I said quite uh, often on this channel is that we were at an area where there was a lot of volume relative to price. And so that's why you tend to see much more sideways action. But now we're below that shelf, that volume shelf of volume relative to price. And when you're below that, when there's a lot of buying pressure or selling pressure, you have big moves in either direction. And so if there's selling pressure going downwards, well, that's where you see things rapidly fall down. And when there's buying pressure below the shelf, where that's where you see buying pressure jump up. Again, there's less volume relative to price. If you have a lot of buyers coming in and there's not a, a lot of people selling around those order books, uh, well, it pushes up the order books, right? That's basically the the you know mechanics of what trading is is what's going on, right? When you're buying and selling, right? There's a lot of buying and there's not a lot of selling. Well, it's going to push things up, right? So that's something. Now. Why could we have possibly seen Tesla stock push upwards besides just saying, oh, well, it bounced off the Fibonacci's? Well, one of the things is, although that tweet that Elon Musk made was a bit, you know, hysterical, a lot of individuals are saying, oh, man, well, this is really bad for Tesla. A lot of individuals didn't quite believe that that would actually end up taking place, especially when you consider a lot of the you know progress that tesla has made in fact if you know just going back to earlier in this video where i highlighted optimus folding clothes you know there's another robotics company i'm not sure if you guys are familiar it's called boston dynamics i would i'd pull it up but i don't i have so many tabs open already but uh, essentially they took 30 years to get where they're at and tesla's optimus is already kind of catching up after two years in fact i believe there was a tweet elon musk made today probably should have pulled it up for you guys but i'm paraphrasing uh and he mentioned that it took Tesla just two years to catch up to Boston Dynamics and they expect to surpass them in the next three years and so a lot of progress with Optimus and of course we know the progress was FSD and so a lot of maybe long-term bulls or, or buyers market participants who were bullish on Tesla said I doubt Elon Musk is going to you know just stifle the plans that have already been done with Tesla from a robotic standpoint or from uh, or from um 
a uh, AI standpoint. And so that that could have been it. Could have been calling a bluff and maybe just saying Elon Musk is just publicly saying this on X. This way he could kind of leverage social media to, you know, get another compensation package. Re- regardless of where you stand, the point is we did see Tesla stock push upwards. It did catch me by surprise, although uh, I didn't trade Tesla. I haven't been trading Tesla recently. Uh, again, I do have long-term exposure to Tesla in my long-term portfolio. So, of course, I'm always happy if Tesla does go up. But as far as trading the fluctuations of prices uh, for Tesla going up and down, I haven't been focusing on Tesla. There's other names I've been looking at, which for those within the push and profit private group, they're aware of that. But um uh, you know, that's just my stance on Tesla. One of the things I'm waiting for is the full fundamental picture, which we get in about, uh, I believe it's 12 days, right? Uh, 24, some, somewhere along the lines. I, you guys could correct me in the comment section below. Um, but basically on the 24th, right? Not, not too far from now, we get uh, the fundamental picture of Tesla. We're going to get to look into the balance sheets, the free cash flow, all the juicy stuff. Some people find that boring, but I, I, it's vital to kind of look into that. Uh, and then, of course, the forward guidance that we get from the earnings call. So I'm kind of waiting on that. I don't want to speculate too much in my long-term portfolio. I want to see what ends up happening because, again, uh, what I simply do with Tesla in my long-term portfolio is I wait for a large sell-off and then confirmation of an uptrend. Are we there yet? Possibly, right? But... I just want to wait more for the fundamental picture to kind of drive the price action on what's currently going on. With that said, um, I also want to highlight something else interesting. So we saw Tesla stock pretty much fall down. Uh, where is it? At 11. So around right over here, right? It, we're, it's looking at a, we're looking at a five-minute chart, so it's not precise. If we go to a one-minute chart, you could find it. You pretty much find it easier. Uh, let's see, 11. Where is it? Uh, we're wasting too much time looking at this. But exactly at 11, we saw Tesla fall down down um same thing with spy it's much more prominent when you look at the s p 500 index etf uh, as well as the nasdaq you see pretty much everything was shooting up and then after 11 things fell down now we did rebound but then we pretty much started uh falling down and you know now we're moving sideways around over here again lots of volume relative to price on this daily or on this uh, one day uh picture here but the question is, okay, well, what took place at 11, right? And I'm going to just toggle over over here and then also toggle over over here. So at 11, we had Fed Governor Christopher Wallace or Waller, sorry, speak, right? He's one of the members of the FOMC. And he gave his speech, uh, which you guys could just go on federalreserve.gov and read exactly what he said. It was a bit of a long speech. Uh, but of course, I encourage you guys to read it. But the whole point of, of this, right, is he did acknowledge that the federal reserve is making progress and that's good right because one of the things i said on this channel is i expect uh rate cuts to cut uh to come uh much more quicker than we expect and also much more rapid but although he was kind of in a sense very dovish saying hey everything's looking good and we are having rate cuts etc things that we know already uh he did mention somewhere in this long speech that they're not uh, going to rush in, and again, this is me paraphrasing, but they're not going to go ahead and rush into doing rate cuts. Now, I, I, I believe this is a, a bit of a bluff, um, and we actually still had the future markets pr- or, you know, pricing in for March's meeting that there is a 65% chance that they are going to cut by 25 basis points. So even though he did say they're not going to rush, we, the, the market is still kind of calling his bluff. And so that's going to be something interesting. Now, uh, panning over to the 10-year Treasury yield, right, this is something that has been actually pushing upwards. Uh, and one of the things that we have to understand is that typically, or in, in my view, right, when we're above 4.1%, that's where we start to see much more selling pressure uh, for the overall markets, not just Tesla, but just the overall market as financial conditions once again start to get much more tighter, right? And that's one of the reasons why I called out, uh, you know, October as being the bottom and we did so well in November and December, right? We saw financial conditions easing, right? And I know some people may say, well, what does the 10-year treasury yields have to do with anything? It has to do with a lot, right? If, if you're in real estate uh, or if you're a lender, you guys know this, but uh, pretty much a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of debt is tied into what the 10-year treasury yields are, are looking like, right? Of course, I could get much more deeper into the conversation, but essentially to simplify it, when a 10-year treasury yields are down, very good for the markets when the 10-year treasury yields start going up. Well, that's bad for the markets, right? There's this risk equity premium uh, or risk premium, right, that, that, that takes place where now it's like, well, why put capital in equities when you could get this return that's much more higher and guaranteed with the 10-year treasury yield, right? And so 
we're seeing that push upwards and we're gonna we're gonna want to continue monitoring that uh for the duration of this week we do have some much more uh, or much more data coming in for example tomorrow we get the fed beige book uh we have a lot of individuals speaking a lot of uh you know um data coming out that's something that we want to be mindful of. but i'll kind of want to skip over uh to what we get uh let's see i believe it is on friday january 26th so we're going to want to pay attention to the tesla fundamentals uh coming out on the 24th but on the 26th we get the pce and that's going to provide a clearer picture again we get two more uh more like inflationary gauges and job reports before we have uh, the meeting uh, where the you know Federal Reserve makes the decision on monetary policy for March. And so, again, things that we're going to want to pay attention to. Now, I just want to quickly circle back to something about Elon. Uh, so I posted this on my community post. Again, if you guys are not subscribed to me on YouTube, hit that subscribe button so you guys uh, get my community post. I sometimes put memes. Uh, sometimes I share data, uh, right, like this data over here, etc. I share a bunch of charts and, you know, what's going on. Uh, but Going back to this, I shared this meme because although I do believe that Elon Musk uh, it does deserve that compensation package, I, it's kind of like a little meme over here saying he kind of did it to himself because he sold Tesla to go ahead and, you know, fund the acquisition for Twitter, right? And so, uh, you know, that's kind of like on his own his own fault at the end of the day right because he really didn't need to although some people will argue well he had to buy x to kind of you know have a free speech town square or town you know hall whatever and also it does help tesla in the long term because of course you know it's like free advertising whatever you want to say uh but you know prior before this acquisition elon musk you know had sufficient amount of uh, uh stake into tesla or you know he didn't need to do that in my opinion but again just a little meme i pointed out but just a friendly reminder to subscribe if you haven't done so already but uh going into tesla again uh haven't really been trading it for uh, quite some time personally i'm going to be waiting for the earnings but you guys let me know in the comment section below what are your thoughts on tesla going into earnings uh what do you guys think after earnings and also are you trading tesla are you investing in tesla um and what are your thoughts on this recent kind of uh you know uh uh, you know developing story with elon musk and and of course what's going on with twitter or x.com and etc uh always interested to hear what you guys have to say but with that said hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys on the next video right over here take care guys